everyone Argonath here from the right way and I uh, came across this article from the Guardian in the UK um, regarding transgender uh, females participating in women's sports very interesting read and um, kind of confirms what all normal people have thought all along so new guidelines for transgender participation unveiled by UK sports councils trans women retain advantages in female sport the report says Sports told to weigh up inclusion, fairness, and safety. Hmm, interesting. So let's have a look. Trans women retain physique, stamina, and strength advantages when competing in female sport, even when they reduce their testosterone levels. New guidelines for transgender participation in national and grassroots sport published by the UK Sports Councils will say on Thursday. So it's coming out. Uh, when was this article written? Uh, 29th of September so I assume the uh, that report has been out now um, so yeah basically I'm pretty sure that any normal person would have thought this anyway right if you were brought up as a boy went through puberty as a boy um, became a young man and then changed later on then you are likely to keep your advantages of all that testosterone during puberty and so on so I guess if you transitioned as a very young child maybe five years old but who would want to do that at five years old um, you might not uh, retain those advantages but it's hard to tell because you'll have unless you're actually on medication to reduce your testosterone before puberty um, that would be a, a problem right the long-awaited report argues there is no magic solution which balances the inclusion of trans women and female sport while guaranteeing competitive fairness and safety and for the first time it tells sports across Britain that they will have to choose which to prioritise. Do you want to do you want to prioritise fairness in women's sport or do you want to prioritise inclusion? Right? Because if you prioritise inclusion, then obviously any transgender person, uh, female, will um, have those inherent advantages that the female people don't have. Otherwise, what's the point of women's sport we could just have everyone competing openly men and women together as well as transgender people that'd be the way to go right but then you'll never get a woman actually winning anything <laughs> not i'm not denigrating women it's just because of the disadvantages between men and women right that, that they just have those physiological disadvantages um being a woman so they need to be able to have a fair playing field where women compete against women without um, any disadvantages Stressing that the finding, stressing that finding new ways to encourage greater inclusion is also hugely important, the report urges national governing governing bodies to find innovative and creative ways to ensure nobody is left out, including coming up with new formats such as non-contact versions of team sports that can be played safely and fairly by everyone. Uh, yeah, well, I guess for rugby you can play uh, touch rugby, so there you go. But then, well, you still would have an advantage if you can run faster than um, the other people so you know how can you reduce a game like rugby or uh, American football gridiron to being non-contact right I mean it's, this is, that's a ridiculous statement <laughs> you can't just change the whole fabric of the sport um, to, <laughs> to include inclusion now something like darts is a completely different um, thing right I don't think there's any kind of physiological advantage there I, I can't think of any um, in pool uh, eight ball pool we have uh, women competing against men um, I don't know if they do that in snooker either but I can't see why females couldn't compete against men in snooker because there doesn't seem to be any advantages that you would have by having a male body over a female body um, but you can't just change the whole fabric of your sport to make it non-contact. <laughs> that would just be ridiculous. I mean, why do people watch rugby and not touch rugby? Because we want to see the full contact nature of uh, rugby. Same thing goes for um, American football. Sports must be a place where everyone can be themselves, where everyone can take part, and where everyone is treated with kindness, dignity, and respect. Of course, but you shouldn't have any advantages over the people that you're comp uh, competing with. The Landmark Report is highly significant because it comes from UK Sport, Sport England, Sport Wales, Sport Scotland, and Sport Northern Ireland. So not just some Mickey Mouse right-wing think tank. This is from actual governing sports bodies across a bunch of nations in the UK 
who between them invest hundreds of millions of pounds in sport each year. It also marks a notable change of emphasis, which sports being told they can no longer fudge the complex and nuanced issue of balancing transgender participation with fairness. While the five councils can't enforce the guidelines, their words carry significant weight and they are likely to be welcomed and implemented by many sports bodies who have felt in limbo while disputes over how trans athletes participate in sport have raged around them. So I think the problem is that a lot of sports are too scared to uh, say anything that would go against the transgender narrative um, because they didn't have anything to kind of back them up. Well, now that they do, right, they have this report um, from all of these particular sports bodies, so they can just say they're following the guidelines set in these, and, you know, that, that will hopefully allow them to make these kind of decisions. However, they may face criticism from some women's advocacy groups who are likely to argue the guidelines do not go far enough, of course, because it's not kind of binding or anything, right? Conversely, some trans rights groups are likely to voice concerns that the guidelines will lead to trans women being excluded from some sports. Well, no, you could a trans woman could, should be able to compete in a men's, era, in a men's um, side of the sport, right? Because then they would have no distinct advantages, right? So even though they, they identify as a woman, you could still play in a men's version of the sport. I don't see any problem with that. I wouldn't have a problem with that. But they don't, because they know if they go to the women's version, then they can win because of their built-in advantages. Many trans groups are skeptical of some of the evidence pointing to the advantages retain, retained by trans women in female sport, although the councils say the work is based on exploring almost all of the most up-to-date research in the area internationally. Seems good for me. I'm happy to take their word on it. As things stand, most sports follow the guidelines set by the International Olympic Committee in 2015, which permit trans women to compete in female sports if they suppress their testosterone level below 10 nanomoles per litre. However, in August, the IOC admitted these rules were not fit for purpose and would need to be revised in the, few, in the next few months after the Olympics. The five sports councils across the UK can go further still by stating that suppressing testosterone for 12 months cannot guarantee fairness. Because not, of course not. By the time you've gone through puberty, your muscle mass has increased, your bone density has increased as a male compared to a female. That, that doesn't go down after you reduce your testosterone levels, right? I'm sure your muscle mass might go down a little bit, but you still had the advantages. Um, and so, yeah, we had the um, situation in the Olympics just gone where we had a New Zealand weightlifter who was transgender, made headlines for being the first transgender athlete at the Olympics. Um, and they were 42 years old competing against 20 to 30 year old um, female athletes. Just think about that for a minute, right? Normally, the older you get, the less well you're going to do in weightlifting. Just makes sense because the older your body gets, it can't lift as much weight, right? So you wouldn't see this person doing any good against any of the um, male weightlifters who are in their 20s and 30s, right? Just wouldn't happen, but because they were 42 years old in a women's field, they could. Now, that particular uh, person didn't get through the very first part of um, the um, the weightlifting thing. They didn't get through the first round because they failed all of their three attempts. Um, but previously, they had taken out all the New Zealand records and so on um, and taken those off a female athlete, which um, just uh, was not good. Um, however, an understanding of the gap between the two sexes can be recognised by results of practice matches between national... So national senior women's football teams the so national so the international level so these are the the top female athletes from the country in this particular sport senior that's not age restricted at all so all of the senior women's football teams so this is for soccer against underage boys teams in recent years so think about this right underage boys team not a national boys team uh, these were i think uh, probably at state or province level but underage boys teams, right? The national teams from Australia, USA and Brazil were beaten comprehensively 7-0, 5-2, 6-0 by club teams of 14 and 15 year old boys. So you can see the inherent disadvantage of 
um, girls versus boys, right? Females versus males. I'm not denigrating the female athletes because it's not their fault. It's just what physiology and biology is, right? So that's why you can't have, you know, that's why we need two things, a men's competition and a female's competition. And a transgender person who's gone through puberty as a male is going to have that advantage. In reviewing the latest science, the guidelines say adult male athletes have on average a 10 to 12% performance advantage over female competitors in swimming and running events. That increases to 20% advantage in jumping events and 35% greater performance in strength based sports such as weightlifting for similar sized athletes. Right, so that is just ridiculous, right? Um, that's, you know. Think about that transgender weightlifter had a 35, probably on average, a 35% greater performance increase, which is why they can still compete in female weightlifting at 42 years old, um, having gone through puberty as a male. As a result of what the review found, the guidance concludes that the inclusion of transgender people into female sport cannot be balanced regarding transgender inclusion, fairness and safety in gender affected sport where there is meaningful competition. So if you want a meaningful competition, equality in terms of uh, fairness in the athletes taking part, you can't include transgender people. It's just the way it goes, right? Because they have an inherent advantage. The transgender guidelines are the result of an 18-month review. So it's not something that was just done in a couple of months. An 18-month review that involves speaking to more than 300 people and 175 organizations, including current and former athletes, transgender people, and, LG and LGBT+, and women's groups. It also examined all the latest scientific research, making it the most comprehensive ever report into this hotly disputed area. No one was able to offer a single solution that would resolve all the identified issues or that would satisfy all stakeholders of review states before calling for a reset of the system. So there is no way you can have something that will be fair and equitable to everyone. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work in the real world. In their report, the Sport Council said that 10 that set out 10 guidelines, principles for sports to follow, including acknowledging the fact that categorization by sex is lawful, because that's why we have men's and women's competitions, and that achieving inclusion across all the strands of the Equality Act is complex and nuanced, and I would say impossible. Sports are also given three potential paths they might consider. They're prioritizing transgender inclusion, protecting the female category by having open and female only categories, establishing new formats by adopting rules that include non-contact versions of team sports so that everyone can play. Uh, well, I don't think anyone's going to do the very last one because introducing non-contact versions of team sports, <laughs> it's just not going to happen, right? But even then, right, something like netball, if you're from a Commonwealth country or basketball, those are supposed to be non-contact sports, right? Males transgender are still going to have an advantage over females. There was a, I, I did a video before, um, if you want to watch it, about a boys netball team playing in a girls competition. So they were under 17 all boys netball team against uh, under 18 uh, all girls teams for the state championship in Queensland. They bet each of the teams on average by about 30 to 40 points and smashed the... Um, in the final they smashed the girls team by about 42 to 12 so you know you can see there's still an inherent advantage even though it was a non-contact sport right so it just doesn't work so basically either have male and female and then maybe a special category category for transgender people they might not feel included but it's just the way it goes or the transgender people can compete in the male category i don't see why that would be a problem for them they can still identify as a female but they'll just be competing against males, which they're more suited for. Or just have it open access. Just have it, just everyone, there's no male, female, transgender options. Everyone competes against everyone else. And basically, um, you'll never get a female winning a competition um, if it's some sort of strength or related competition. Anyway, that's my opinion. What do you think? Do you agree with this report? Um, is it something that you've thought for a while but have been too scared to say, maybe out loud? Well, now you have some backing to back you up, right? Um, let me know in the comments section. Um, I'd really love to hear your comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, you're welcome to give me a thumbs down. If you like my content, please give me a subscription. It'll just help my videos to get noticed by the YouTube algorithm, and then hopefully more people will see it. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hopefully, I will catch you in the next video.